At the height of the Boko Haram crisis, Shatima Baba Kural Kali met a group of people fleeing attacks in 2013. They were out in the streets of Maiduguri, hungry and exposed to the elements. They sought temporary shelter on his property before moving to displaced people's camps. This place was my main source of income, but I sent all tenants away to make room for the displaced. Currently, there are 3,000 displaced people here. I haven't earned anything since their arrival. Six years on, the refugees show no signs of leaving. Mustafa Kimemi is one of them. He says he's going to wait out this crisis in this camp, no matter how long it takes. Only a few days ago, people in Konduga went to gather firewood. Two were killed. A few others escaped. You have to think about your safety first. The United Nations estimates that more than 6 million people in the Lake Chad region have been affected by Boko Haram violence. Two and a half million of them are in need of food, shelter and medicines. Before the Boko Haram crisis, Maiduguri was a city of 1,200,000 people. Today, the population has doubled to two and a half million. A few hundred thousand displaced persons live in camps around the city, but the majority live in the larger community. The recent escalation of violence has forced many returnees to flee back to these camps again. Regional forces in the Lake Chad region have recently stepped up their air and ground operations against Boko Haram targets. They say they want to clear the area of fighters so that people can return home and that they are on course to achieve their objectives. We've continued to procure the needed equipment not only to prosecute the conflict in the northeast but also ensuring other areas are covered in terms of the, uh, the equipment that we've been uh, requiring for uh, them to, to operate. Until then, the displaced continue to wait in places like these, a temporary solution that's increasingly becoming a permanent feature in the region. Ahmed Idris, Al Jazeera, Maiduguri.